Hello, my name is John Hogan. Uh, we're going to talk about metrics, and you can think of this presentation as an introductory chapter of an online on-demand course that uh, could be tailored to a specific company's project management metric training needs. But let's get right uh, into it and ask the question, why metrics? Why would we collect metrics? Well, it's related to the human condition and um, project management. Think of management as composed of planning, and when you plan something, you're predicting the future, and execution. So if someone puts a plan together and says we're going to be in a test berth for user acceptance test in 10 months, they put a plan together. And if you're executing that and you're in the test berth in 14 months, and the first scenario, instead of taking what the planner said of three days, is now taking you eight days. So the planners can't predict the future. And that is the real problem. Humans cannot predict the future. And because humans cannot predict the future, we need a way to inform us that the future is not turning out the way we had hoped. And that's where metrics come in. Now, putting the baseline together is uh, not an easy task uh, in itself. And you've seen uh, jugglers maybe on The Tonight Show or uh, Las Vegas juggling bowling balls. And you can almost think that of, as an image of putting the plan together. So we have our project manager putting the bowling balls of cost, the functionality, and schedule, and balancing those to uh, build a baseline. And when we're in the execution phase, things are generally hunky-dory, right? The future hasn't come upon us yet, so our stakeholders uh, watch us and offer us their opinion. And building the baseline is not easy, but I honestly believe it's easier than the execution. So again, our stakeholders, nice job, very thorough. Can I leave now? What happens next is that the future is upon us and there's a potential for those uh, bowling balls to uh, turn into chainsaws and you've probably seen those jugglers that can juggle chainsaws on the tonight show uh, if you're that project manager juggling chainsaws that's uh that's not good uh for your career unless you're very good at juggling chainsaws in which case uh, you might want to work in las vegas or the business equivalent of being good at juggling chainsaws might be being a good BS artist. And we don't want to encourage uh, our project managers to be BS artists. We want them to encourage to avoid this situation where your cost schedule functionality baseline is uh, going way off track. So we want to control the future or, or adapt to it. And uh, we need this uh, warning system uh, to tell us that we're in trouble and we need a warning system to tell us we need to do something about it. And obviously, that's where metrics come in. And in the execution phase, uh, the project manager's life is, is monitoring, collecting project performance data, uh, understanding it, well, what these measures mean. Again, that's this idea of metrics. And then controlling it and basically showing yourself as a leader and taking action again to confront the future that's unfolding before you now let's look at a traditional project uh, versus an agile project i'll kind of discuss that difference uh, shortly here but a traditional project is one in which the goal is stated in terms of the deliverables so we know what we're building the activities to required to build the, the deliverables are known and the future can be planned. In an agile project, uh, we don't plan the future, we adapt to the future and the goal is stated in terms of the user's needs. So the nature of the, the metrics are a little bit different. For, for the time being, let's concentrate on this idea of uh, a traditional project. So a good metrics program is going to be one that is going to let us know that the future is not aligning with our plan. And, uh, and we want to use the minimum set of metrics because metrics have cost. And what are some of those costs? Well, there's certainly time to uh, collect the metric. Uh, some of the tools that might get used have uh, 
dollars, uh, licensing dollars associated with it. But there's one other cost I think that is important. And that's uh, the morale of the team. If they spend two hours collecting metrics that they think are is not really going to be used and it's just going into someone's report to sit on someone's desk, uh, they're not going to be productive again for at least another two hours. So the morale uh, that uh, comes about when you put a good metrics program together, a meaningful metrics program together, is an important uh, element to put into your metrics plan. We want the metrics to indicate the probability of success of the project and including trends what areas uh, we need to pay attention to, and have sufficient timeliness to allow us to put together mitigating uh, corrective actions. Obviously, what, what is a metric? It's a dynamic measure of anything from the organization's people, processes, controls, or deliverables. Uh, and it, we want them to indicate the probability of the project's success in meeting its cost, schedule, functionality, obligations, and when the probability of success decreases, basically it's Houston, we have a problem, we need to do something about it. Now, headlight metrics are better than rear view mirror metrics. So here we're showing a deer coming into someone's headlights. That's a metric. The person can move over to the other lane. Life is good. Another metric is hearing a thump, looking in your rearview mirror, and realizing uh, you have an unpleasant evening in front of you with, uh, with the police. If you have a headlight metric, you can avoid problems. A rearview mirror metric, you need to uh, rework or repair the problem. And you need both types of metrics. If you find a defect in your product, you have to fix it, uh, and that's rework. If you can have a metric that tells you you're going to avoid putting that defect in there, that's, uh, that can be better, if it's a cost-effective metric. Because as we said, metrics have cost. So there is a cost of rework. If the cost of the metric is the same as the cost of the rework, you'd really have to question yourself as to the advantage of having that as a metric. So you want a small cost to be leveraged to avoid uh, a larger, significantly larger amount of, of rework. Let's look at uh, some examples and let's look at ones that have the, the biggest bang for the buck. Milestone tracking, That's uh, has a milestone been hit and it's a yes or no uh, indicator, digital indicator. Staffing level, uh, and that would obviously milestone would address schedule. Staffing uh, could address cost because you'll know people are, are spending money on a particular uh, task required of the project. The tracking Gantt uh, actually shows all the tasks and their schedules. That's an excellent uh, schedule uh, metric. Number of change requests could tell you the stability of your requirements baseline. Test results can tell you the quality of your, your product. And often these are put into a project portfolio dashboard. Another one that we might, you might have in your head is the earned value, earned value management. That's uh, touted as an important metric, especially on large government programs. I didn't initially list it here because uh, of this bang for the buck idea. Earned value management is an expensive undertaking. So you really have to make sure you have the culture and the need to uh, get that type of a, a detailed metric uh, applied to your, uh, your organization and to your project. But let's look at a couple of these in more detail. Let's look at the tracking Gantt, uh, milestone tracking, and this idea of a project portfolio dashboard. Now tracking Gantt, very straightforward. All the task elements that have to be completed uh, are, are listed. And then we have calendar time going uh, left to right across the top. And uh, in this case, the gray bars are showing the initial plan and the uh, blue is showing what our actual uh, performance has been. So this project got started late. Uh, this one this started late and finished even, even later. And then the red indicates projections of what's going to happen uh, to that project based on the performance that we've been observing to date. And that's kind of an earned value concept. So you project the performance that you've experienced 
to the tasks that are still in, in front of you. Now, one fairly well-known tracking Gantt is MS Project. A lot of uh, bells and whistles. Uh, if you go down that road, uh, you can get a lot of data out of it, but make sure the people that are using it uh, and applying it have been trained. And I'm talking a week or two of training. It's a very powerful but complex uh, way to track, uh, again, performance. A simpler, more intuitive tool that's out there is uh, WBS Scheduler. Not as much uh, information, but generally as much information as an a average size project would need, a lot more intuitive to use. We talked about dashboards as another example of how to use metrics. Uh, has other names, executive dashboard, the KPI summary. The main idea is this idea of data visualization. So you can get a quick look at the health of a project by looking at uh, the dashboard of metrics for that project. So getting at a glance understanding of the health. There are software applications that are out there that uh, you can utilize. Do not underestimate the complexity of a fully automated profile dashboard. Uh, implementing that is a major undertaking, which can be a means uh, in itself and can overshadow the overall goal. So they sound very good, but this ability to drill down automatically uh, can be uh, very expensive to make sure it is uh, foolproof. What I would suggest if you're starting off using a dashboard, to start off with a uh, professional looking Excel spreadsheet. So it's formatted in a professional uh, fashion. It doesn't have to be linked. It's unlinked. You're just looking at uh, entering the status for each milestone or whatever uh, metric element is on the dashboard. And uh, I would say typically updated on a weekly basis. It's a multi-way communication tool. You as the project manager are telling your teams what you want them to pay attention to. So what you put on that dashboard is your statement of what is important to track on this program. The team is telling you their status and you are conveying to your management your control of the project or multiple projects that have been entrusted to you. And their data fields can be selected from your specific organizational project or industry metrics, risk items that, that you know about within your project. So you have to go through an effort to find out what are the key cost-effective metrics to be tracking in the first place. Now we have an example here of hospital activation as a use as a, a dashboard. Uh, and we did use this in opening the, uh, the VA hospital in Orlando. And this dashboard was shown uh, every week. We had about 40 uh, services that had to open. And we showed all the milestones that had to happen to, to make the ultimate milestone uh, occur on time. The ultimate milestone was the first patient seen. So let's look at, at radiology. That was the, needed to be the plan June 15th to be uh, the first patient seen. So we had to have clinical staff orientation and training completed by that date. Uh, for them to do that training, they had to have access to all the medical equipment and software so that all commissioning and testing had to be completed by this date and the phones had to be by this date. And you see, we marched back to all the elements that had to happen to allow this date. And again, this dashboard was very effective in uh, letting management know where they had to uh, apply resources. And their green means the date is uh, was hit or is going to be hit. Yellow, it was missed or going to be missed. And red, and we had several reds then we were not going to hit that date or the date had passed. Now, if you're going to use a metric like this, whether it's milestones or actual uh, data values, you have to have a uh, clear definition of what makes a field red, yellow, or green. So we're going to look at uh, this one here. So let's just look at that in a little more detail. So that was medical equipment inspected prior to network configuration. And you just can't go to a bioengineer that's responsible for, responsible for that and say, are you going to be ready? And he or she says, uh, yes, and you make it green, or I'm a little 
concern, you make it yellow. That's not the way to apply this type of dashboard. It cannot be subjective. So you can use a checklist, and we had checklists for all those vertical columns. This was one of the shorter ones, in fact. But for, as an example, all medical equipment must be powered and all available built-in tests successfully run. If that happens, and all calibrations that can be accomplished prior to network configuration have happened, then you have, uh, you can call it green, and if the date is not going to be hit for those two very specific things, it's uh, yellow, and uh, if we've missed the date for those two specific things, it's red. Okay? So, uh, another example might be staffing. Uh, are, are you staffed adequately, and the project manager or, or some person responsible for that area says, yeah, I feel pretty good, let's make it green. You really have to have a priori it can only be green if you're 95% staffed, and if you're 90% staffed, it's going to be uh, yellow, and anything below 90% is going to be red. But again, specific data for the uh, reason to make something red, yellow, or green. Now, the benefits, early identification of uh, interest, it demonstrates to your team your seriousness and to management of your commitment. And it, if you select the metrics correctly, you can really focus on the organizational objectives. So in the example I just showed, a hospital seeing the first patient is obviously a organizational objective. Let's get it right into the dashboard and look at all the subsequent or the precursors to making that milestone happen. Now, what happens when a metric is not going to be met or, or uh, has been uh, missed? Uh, we need, a, I think, a, re, a standard way to, uh, to report these issues. And a standard template is going to facilitate early mitigating actions, ease the pain of, of bringing bad news. We don't want to shoot the messenger. We want to fix the problem. And I think a well-designed way of reporting issues can highlight the need, you, the need you might have for help from the organization, who the key players are, enhance your image as a leader, and increase the intensity across your projects. And an uh, effective way of doing that is the, uh, the four blocker, which I'll show you in a, in a second here. So in the four blocker, we have, and this will be a PowerPoint chart, and be a little block here for either be red, yellow, or green. And uh, you really wouldn't show the green ones in your weekly meeting, but in the red and yellow, you'd, in this block, a definition of the metric. What is the metric that, uh, what are we actually measuring in detail? What is its status? What is the root cause for why it's uh, not being met? Your best estimate of that re uh, root cause and what is your action plan? So as an example, uh, and here's another one, we were working with the HVAC company and uh, the uh, occurrence of a crane being on site is a big deal in making sure all the HVAC gets installed on time in a, four or five story building. So here was the uh, definition. It wasn't just that the crane was there. You know, that would be a subjective. You know, I looked out the window, it looks like the crane's there. Let's make it green. We have a little bit of definition here. The operator is there. The operator is confirming the crane's readiness, which how it's attached uh, to the ground and, and uh, everything is ready to go to live that, lift that first uh, heavy item. The status in this case uh, was needed September 29th. It's not arrived. Multiple calls to the provider have made with no firm promise. What's the root cause? Weather at another site where we're getting our crane from has delayed the completion. And then this sounds kind of obvious, but the idea is to make sure that we're all dealing with the same understanding of the root cause as soon as we get into that meeting. Putting it on black and white in a PowerPoint chart is one way to do it. And then what would the action plan be? Again, right in that meeting, you want to be talking about what you're going to do about this metric that's out of limits. Maybe we need to get the lawyers involved. Maybe the contract allows you some uh, relief if the uh, crane shows up. Maybe we need a president call of your president of your company to the uh, other uh, company, the crane company's president to uh, request a favor to do whatever they can to get some other crane on site and maybe it's just replan activities that need to get replanned to uh, ensure that productive work gets done even though the crane isn't on site 
So keep that idea in mind of a, a four blocker. It can be a very effective way to show leadership uh, when it comes to a, a metric being uh, out of bounds. So in summary, we looked about, uh, you know, in this quick presentation here, why metrics, the future might not uh, turn out the way you would plan. Metrics are going to be a way to warn you of that. We looked at some examples, uh, tracking GAN, schedule, and with Microsoft Project, you can also be looking at cost, uh, what staffing within the same tool, this idea of milestone tracking. Again, it needs to be yes, no, with a checklist of what would make it yes, and uh, dashboards as a way of uh, quickly showing the overall health of a particular status. The example we showed was the uh, activation of a hospital. Uh, a way to report issues when they go uh, out of bounds. And again, think of this presentation as an introductory chapter to a, um, for, uh, a tailored uh, metrics course, tailored to a specific uh, company's needs. So with that, I wish you good luck and uh, hope your bowling balls don't turn into chainsaws and good luck with establishing your metrics program.